Well, thank you so much, Mrs. Cavanaugh. And I, I just want you to know I have prepared tonight an hour and a half devotional that I'm going to give. And no, I'm just kidding. Don't leave on me just yet, if you will. I'm going to get the ushers to come help me, if you will, please. All my ushers, if you'll be kind enough to come. Brother Butler, you'll serve the guys over here. Brother Jonathan, you'll serve the guys over here. And what I want you to do, these uh, ushers are going to give you a three by five card tonight. And uh, I just want you to hold on to it for a little bit. I'm not, I'm not going to ask you to do anything with it. Just kind of hold on to it for a little bit. I'd appreciate that so very, very much. And so they're going to pass that out tonight. Everybody should get one. So uh, everybody should have one. And let's kind of make sure that all of them are served, if you will. And I appreciate that very much. Proverbs chapter 18 and verse 24, the Bible says, a man that hath friends must show himself friendly. Now may I say tonight, it is good to have friends. But if you're going to have friends, you're going to have to put your best foot forward in trying to be a friend. It's not a matter of how many friends you have. Stay with me now. It is a matter of how friendly you are to others, how you are a friend to others. You say, but preacher, I don't have many friends. But how many people are you trying to be a friend to? Now, the Bible says again, a man that has friends must show himself friendly. You say, preacher, nobody shakes my hand. You're not supposed to expect people to come up and shake your hand. You're supposed to go up and make the initiative, if you would please yourself, of shaking somebody else's hand. Oh, but preacher, nobody smiles at me. Well, maybe you ought to take the initiative tonight of smiling at other people. Oh, but preacher, nobody comes to my seat doing handshaking time and shakes my hand. Well, that's because you're not supposed to be in your seat doing handshaking time. You're supposed to be walking around shaking other people's hands. You're not supposed to come to church to be served, dear beloved friend. You're supposed to come to church to serve. Well, I came to church just to see how much I can get out of it. No, you're supposed to come to church to see how much you can put into it. That's what you're supposed to do. Oh, but preacher, I tell you what, nobody's friendly to me. Well, if you want to leave church right after the first amen is, uh, or after the last amen is said, maybe somebody would be able to catch you and be able to be your friend. You have to decide that if you want friends, you take the first step. You decide to be that friend. The Bible says a man that have friends must, must, must show himself friendly. The Bible says there is a friend that sticketh. You ever have something stick to you? You ever get something sticky on your hand you just can't get it off? You ever see that thing that comes with a, a, a self-stick type of thing and you put it on the wall and it just kind of sticks there? You ever see that? Well, that's a description of the way that our Lord is going to stick to you. Now, wouldn't it be good if you copied him? Wouldn't it be good if you just decided to stick it out as a friend no matter what the other person did to you? Wouldn't it be good if we just be Christian in our friendship? The Bible says there is a friend that sticketh closer than a brother. You know, somebody said many years ago uh, that man's best friend is his dog. Now, that's what they said. Said it doesn't matter how you treat the dog, the dog's always going to be there for you. It doesn't matter if you have money or not, the dog's going to be there for you. Doesn't matter if you have a title or not, the dog's going to be there for you. Doesn't matter if you have a position or not, the dog's always going to be there for you. Doesn't matter if you've given the dog privileges or not, that dog is always going to be there for you. That dog has one thing in mind, and that is. He wants to be close to his master. If you speak his name, you make his day. If you pet him, he thinks he's in dog heaven. There is no such thing as dog heaven. But he thinks he's in dog heaven. You know, he loves you unselfishly. He loves you undeniingly. He loves you with an undying faith in you. Now, sad to say that most believers do not have that devotion one to another. May I say, most married couples do not have that devotion one to another. Somebody said, the single soul is uh, uh, like somebody, if you would please, dwelling in two bodies, if you will, closely knit together by that which is 
friendship. Somebody else said that a friend may welcome that which is another friend, understanding that is a divine masterpiece built by God. Somebody said this, that as you journey through life, uh, if you make friends, God bless you. If you lose friends, God bless you. And by the way, isn't that the way it goes? You know, what do you do with the friend that you have? You thank God for them. What do you do with a person that's no longer your friend? You simply pray for them. You don't criticize them. You don't Facebook about them. You don't get mean about them. You don't try to hurt their character. You don't try to damage them. You simply love them and you pray for them at a distance. Now, in the Bible, God has given us several definitions of what it is to be able to be that real friend. How is it tonight that you can be that real friend? Let me give you some things according to the Bible as God defines friendship tonight. Statement number one, uh, a real friend sacrifices. A real friend sacrifices. The book of John chapter 15 and verse 12, the Bible says, this is my commandment that you love one another as I have loved you. Greater love hath no man than this, than a man lay down his life for his Friends. The Bible says, you're my friends. If you do whatsoever I command you. Henceforth, he says, I call you not servants. For it says, the servant knoweth not what his Lord doeth. But he says, I call you friends. He says, for all uh, ye have heard that my Father, it says, I have made known unto you. And so he said this. He said there's a distinctive difference between being that which is somebody who serves and somebody who's a friend. You know, some people come to church because they just feel like they have to. Then some people come to church because they just want to. Some people do kind things for other people because they feel like they have to. Then some people do kind things for other people because they just want to. Some people spend time with people because they feel like they have to. Other people feel time uh, that they spend with people as well regarded and of a great value simply because they feel like they want to. Now can I tell you tonight, a real friend sacrifices. There was a fellow by the name of Jack, uh, Jack Lawyer. Jack Lawyer uh, had an office building. He was over some storage bins, and there was a man that came down shabbily dressed every single day. He got his tools, and he did uh, that which was uh, uh, maintenance of yards and did yard work, and he owned his own yard cleaning company and stuff, and so, boy, he was just coming down just faithful as could be. Every day, he'd arrive there about 7 o'clock in the morning, just all shabbily dressed dressed, and one day he came in, and he had the poochy lip disease, his bottom lip was sagging down between his two big toes, and he came into Jack's office, and he said, I just need to talk to you, and he went over to Jack, and he started to express himself, he said, you know, it's been a miserable life, he said, I lost my wife, he said, I lost my partner because he cheated and stole money from me, and I had to fire him and break up that uh, partnership, and he said, it's just been a miserable life, and Jack sat there, and he listened to him for all almost an hour and just nodded his head and prayed with him and tried to encourage him, tried to get him to be close to God and tried to help him to see as he said he was a believer uh, to be able to walk with God and let God take care of his problem. And so after a while, this man left his office. The very next day he showed up and there's Jack out there beside the, the trash bin. And Jack looked so discouraged. I mean, just the other day, this man looked discouraged, but it was different now. This man came in, he was just so thankful. He had a spring in his step and he went over to Jack and he said, Jack, what are you doing? He said, well, I was kind of overlooking the garbage bin. And he said, my glasses fell off in the garbage bin. He said, oh, I'll take care of that. He jumped in the garbage bin just like it was nothing. He started looking for those glasses and he pulled them out and he held them up and he said, here's your glasses. And Jack said, I can't believe you did that. He said, you jumped in that garbage bin and he said it stunk to high heaven. He said it was terrible and you didn't think anything about it. And the man looked back at Jack and said, I would do anything for a friend. You know, friends sacrifice for each other. Friends will stay up extra hours to be able to encourage somebody. Friends will pat other people on the back. Friends will give words of good cheer. 
Friends will be that person that will help you to be able to live for God and to be able to step out and do things that God would be honored in you doing. I'm saying this, statement number one, a real friend sacrifices. Statement number two, a real friend loves. A real friend loves. Now, as you listen to me right now and you get that three by five card, here's what I want you to do with that three by five card. I want you to write down some people's names that God brings to your heart that you need to love more. There's people that God is going to bring to your heart that you need to love more. Oh, it might be your daddy tonight. It might be your mama tonight. It might be your brother tonight. It might be your sister tonight. It might be your mama tonight or your brother, your sister. It might be your daddy, as I've already said, or it just might be somebody else in the church that you have not loved like you should. Maybe tonight you've held some bitterness in your heart. Maybe tonight you have held some unforgiveness in your heart. Maybe tonight as you're thinking about that person, you know that you have not loved them like you should love them, and you know that it might be because they've got some things that bother you. Oh, do they bother you ever so much? Might be the way they walk. It might be the way they talk. It might be the way they sit. It might be the way they express themselves. It might be the way that they sing. It might be the way that they preach. It might be the way they teach a Sunday school class. It might be the way that they eat and it bothers you. It might be the way that they uh, uh, are telling a joke and they just are not good at it. You know, it might be something else, but I want you to take your time and uh, I want you to think about some things I'm saying tonight and why don't you write some names down of some people that you yourself are going to concentrate on loving more. Here's what the Bible says. The Bible says in Proverbs chapter 17 and verse 17, the Bible says, a friend loveth at all times. Amen. The Bible says, and a brother is born for adversity. Now I want you to think about this tonight. You were born to be able to help somebody else with the adverse times that they're going through. Somebody needs you tonight. Oh, they may never say thank you. They may never say God bless you. They may never return the favor. They may never smile at you. They may never give you, uh, if you would please, a, a hearty handshake. But that person needs you in their life. Who is it tonight that God could use you to be able to help? Who is it tonight that God could use you to be able to encourage it might be somebody that's sitting in this room and you know that you've not loved them the way that you should love them. You know that you've not spent time with them and trying to encourage them the way that you should spend time with them and trying to encourage them. You've let something in their life affect you in the wrong way. You've let some misunderstandings all of a sudden come up in your life that is between you and this other person. And now there's harsh words and now there's harsh feelings and now there is feelings, if you would please tonight, that go very deep because somebody stepped in your area, your space, if you will, and because of that, there's ill will one towards another. Can I tell you about Jesus' love? The Bible says that uh, a friend loveth at all times and a brother is born for adversity. Can I tell you, when Jesus was on the cross, uh, everything he did had a connection with everlasting love. The Bible says in Jeremiah chapter 31 and verse 3, yea, he says, I have loved thee with an everlasting love. You know what that means? That means this, that his love for you is unconditional. Amen. It's not based on what you do. It's not based on if you meet a certain criteria in which uh, he has proposed for you. No, no, no. It's not based on what you do. It is based on, stay with it now, who he is. Amen. He loves you because he is love, and he knows uh, that you're undeserving, and he knows that I'm undeserving, but can I tell you tonight, you have a heavenly Father that loves you unconditionally. Can I tell you that uh, it's already settled? He's going to love you no matter what you do. He's going to forgive you no matter what you do. Pray to God we'd have Christians that would be that way. You know, forgiveness, we ought to lay up so that we can draw upon it. By the way, if you forgive somebody before they cross your path, can I tell you, it's not hard to forgive them when they do cross your path. If you forgive your wife before she crosses you, can I tell you, it's a whole lot easier to forgive her when she crosses you. If you can forgive your husband before he crosses you, can I tell you, it's a whole lot easier to forgive him when he crosses you. You. 
If you can forgive that church member long before they do something to cross you, can I tell you, you've got enough forgiveness and enough of God's love inside of you to be able to help them and to be able to encourage them. Hey, write that name down of somebody you need to work on loving more. It might be your daddy. It might be your mama. It might be your grandpa. It might be your grandmother. It might be your sister, your brother. It might be a, a half-sister or a half-brother. It might be an uncle. It might be an aunt. It might be a cousin. It might be a nephew. It might be a niece. It might be a friend that's sitting in this room. But you know you're lacking. You know that you should be giving it more. You know that inside of the heart that uh, God has showed you that this is somebody that you need to work on. This is somebody and you want that everlasting love. Uh, can I tell you, we're living in a generation today that is easily offended about everything. I mean, I'm telling you, there are more people that church hop than ever I've seen in my day. Can I tell you, there's more people that was friends that are friends. Can I tell you that, listen, there's more divorces today than I've ever seen in my life. Simply because of the fact that we don't understand the way that we're supposed to love people and real friends love. You be that person that loves, oh, but they mistreated me. Oh, I love you. But in the name of the Lord, get over it. Well, they stepped on my toe. Well, invite them to sit in your lap. Well, they sat in my chair. Well, give them the whole bench. Well, they parked in my parking lot. Go buy them a new car. Look, I'm saying this. I'm saying tonight that uh, stop being so edgy. Now, I see you're fanning. I'm very well aware of that. And can I tell you, if you're hot, I'm hotter. But let me keep going. You have to be somebody tonight that loves people regardless. Isn't it funny? We want everybody to love us, and we want everybody to think good of us, and we want everybody to pat us on the back, and we want everybody to accept us, and we want everybody, if you would please, to think highly of us, but yet we don't do that with other people. And can I tell you, dear friend, tonight, that's called a hypocrite. You ought to decide tonight that you're going to love people. It doesn't matter what they look like. It doesn't matter what they smell like. It doesn't matter if they have an educational degree that's as high as you think your status is. It doesn't matter tonight how much money they got in the bank. It doesn't matter tonight if they live in a trailer, they live in an apartment, they live in a refined uh, new built home. It doesn't matter tonight. God wants you to simply step out and just decide tonight you are going to love people. I'm saying tonight, I'm saying real friends sacrifice. Real friends love. Real friends are steadfast. Steadfast. What's that mean, preacher? Well, let's use our Bible to define that tonight. The Bible says in Proverbs chapter 18 and verse 24, the Bible says a man that have friends, here it is again, must show himself friendly. It didn't say must show himself friendly when others are friendly to him. It did not say tonight, show himself friendly when somebody smiles at him. It doesn't say show himself friendly when everything is going his way or her way. Oh, I've seen, I don't know if you've seen or not, I've seen some moody Christians. <laughs> Woo! I mean, can I tell you, when things are going right in their life, they got the big old cheesy smile, earlobe to earlobe. When things are not going well in their life, you can tell. Because they're walking around like they're in the dumps and you put them there. Now, I want to submit something to you tonight. Nobody, nobody can ruin your day. If you have a self-proclaimed pity party and you have a ruined day, it's because that's the day you chose. Oh, but so-and-so, they just rubbed me the wrong way. Well, then turn around, it'll be the right way. Hello. You can decide what type of person you want to be. Well, so-and-so, they got me so upset, my smile left. Oh, dear friend. 
When pressure squeezes you, what is on the inside comes out. You ever squeeze an orange? Get pear juice? You ever squeeze an orange, turns into apple cider? No. See, what happens when you get squeezed in your Christian life and your Christian walk, whatever comes out really reveals who you are. So if life is squeezing you, whatever's coming out right now really reveals who you are. Now, can I say this tonight? I'm saying this. I'm saying that real friends are steadfast. The Bible says uh, a man that has friends must show himself friendly. And the Bible says that a, a, a friend now sticketh closer than a brother. Now, do we understand this? That uh, uh, you are supposed to simply stick with someone. Well, I'm going to stick with them as long as they make me happy. That's not friendship. Well, I'm going to stick with them until they cross me. That's not friendship. By the way, listen to me. Everybody's going to have a bad day. What if you dump your friend on their bad day? Doesn't make sense to me. Got a friend? For 90 days, they've been good to you. 90 days. 90 days, they've loved you. 90 days, they've been right there for you. 90 days, they walk beside you. And all of a sudden, here comes 91st day. And they have a bad day. And man, no matter what you say, they criticize. No matter what you say, they throw it back in your face. No matter what you say, it cannot be said right. And boy, they're just giving it back to you right away. Now, can I tell you, if they were good to you for 90 days, why in the world you want to ditch a friendship over one day? Hello? You know, my dear wife and I, we've been married for uh, 34 years. And in those 34 years, there's been some times where she looked at me and I looked at her and we didn't quite agree on things. I didn't throw the marriage or flush it down the commode. Well. <laughs> so how did it turn out? I showed her I was right. That's how it turned out. Well. No, we worked it through. We talked it out. We came to a mutual, mature decision. Now, can I tell you, dear friend, tonight, I'm saying this, that a friend sacrifices, a friend loves, a friend is steadfast, steadfast. I've seen different ones. I watched, I was with Brother Davis, and Brother Davis, of course, he and his precious wife, honey, how many years? Seventy? How many? Talk to me. Seventy-two. Thank you, Mrs. Jones. Seventy-two years. I, I watched him sit in a chair in the hospital, married 72 years, knowing his wife was getting ready to go home and meet the Lord, tears coming down his face. One statement he said, Mrs. Davis, he said, now by the way, very aged lady, you knew Mrs. Davis. He said, preacher right there is the most beautiful woman in the world. Amen. You know why? Oh, yes, she changed. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But he wasn't looking necessarily on the outside. He saw the real person. Oh, dear friend, if you could get this. It's not a matter of how somebody looks on the outside. Why don't you give them a true evaluation about who they really are on the inside? You know, we do change. Somebody says when you get older as a man, you have furniture disease. Your chest drops into your drawers. <clears throat> May be true. I'll not confess it. But can I tell you tonight, you need to decide to be a friend. Maybe one of the per person's names you need to write down on that three by five card is your wife. Maybe you ought to decide that, hey, you're going to be true to the end, faithful. Maybe tonight you ought to decide that you've got a child that's giving you trouble. I mean, they're rebelling. Yes, they're even embarrassing you. 
But maybe tonight you need to write down their name on that little three by five card and say, I'll tell you what, though they may not be right with God and though they may not be right with me, I'm not going to forsake what I need to do to be able to love them and meet their personal need. Maybe tonight it's a mom and dad. You say, my mom and dad's just not right. They're not fair. They don't have to be fair for you to love them. They don't have to be fair for you to be fair to them. I'm saying tonight, a real friend sacrifices, real friend loves, real friend is steadfast. I'm hurrying to the end right now. A real friend accepts. Listen to it. Matthew chapter 11 and verse 19 gives us a prime example. The Bible says the Son of Man came eating and drinking. And they say, behold, uh, the man is a gluttonous and a, a wine bibber, the Bible says, and a friend of publicans, listen to it now, and sinners. You know, Christ sat down with sinners. They didn't look like him. They didn't smell like him. My brother sent me pictures of when I was a, uh, right before I got saved. Man, I got the long hair styled back down to here. And I said, hmm. I showed it to my dear wife, and I said, this goes nowhere. <laughs> she says, honey, can I show it? I need money for North Carolina. <laughs> but I looked at that when I was one of the cool kids. I looked at that when I was Mr. Popularity in a public school. I looked at that, and I remember back when God reached down and God saved me, and then I went to a fundamental, independent, premillennial, hellfire, brimstone, soul-winning, separated Baptist church, and I started hearing the preaching of God's Word, and teenagers would not accept me, but there was about two that did. And because they accepted me and they helped me and they loved me and they encouraged me, can I tell you that we understand this, that a real friend accepts. Oh, somebody's not as, uh, 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 if you would please, not as far advanced in serving God as you are. You're not supposed to reject them. They're not walking with God like you are. Well, you're not supposed to reject them. You know, you don't know how far they'll go in serving God. You have no idea. You don't know what God will use them to do. So what do you do? You decide that you're going to be that friend that just, hey, accept them and love them and encourage them. You say, but they stink. Okay, buy them deodorant. Love them, accept them, Amen. encourage them. Amen. Do something to help them instead of criticizing them. Amen. Let me give you a, 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 two more and I'm done. A real friend offers correction. Uh, you know... I've said this often. You've heard me say this from the pulpit. I enjoy being your pastor, and I enjoy being your friend. I enjoy being able to walk beside you, and some of you I walk beside you in different ways because you have invited me to be in your life. Now, I'm not going to intrude. I can't. It's not proper. It's not right. So I'm not going to intrude. But different ones have come to me and said, Preacher, I just need a friend. Would you be it? Can you help me personally? And we walk beside each other. We encourage each other. We try and help each other. Now, can I tell you, everybody needs somebody, yes, also that gives correction. Yeah. Proverbs chapter 27 and verse 6, the Bible says, Faithful are the wounds of a friend. Now, by the way, different people are different ways. You know that? I mean, I can go up to somebody and point my finger in their chest and say, now look, that was the dumbest thing you could ever do in your life. Now straighten it up. If you don't straighten it up, it's going to ruin you. Now you need to straighten it up. They'll take that admonition, that correction, that rebuke, if you will. They'll walk away. They'll be as happy as a June bug on a summer day. They're just as happy as can be. But if I did that to some people, they'd say, I can't believe he talked to me that way. I just can't believe he said that to me. Oh, that just bothers me to no end. He doesn't care about me. And see, I have to read people. So sometimes I have to go to a brother and I say, no, look, I sure do love you. I'm so honored to be your pastor. I'll butter that thing up. And by the way, it is true. I'm not just buttering it up. It's true. I'm speaking the truth. But I'll say, I sure do love you. And I, I want to walk beside you. And I want to. But, you know, even our kids were different. I couldn't put all my kids in a bucket, shake them up, pour them out, 
them all be the same. Some of our kids, I'd say, hey, look, hey, that was wrong. Don't you ever do that again. They'd take it. Another child, I'd have to say, no, look, let's talk about this. Let's go over here and reason together. And as they got older, I treated them with more dignity and maturity than I did when they were young as teenagers. And I treated them more like men, and yes, uh, my dear precious girl, more like a lady. But can I say this? I can say that uh, a real friend offers correction. The Bible says, faith for the wounds of a friend. But the kisses of an enemy are deceitful. Statement number next, a real friend forgives. A real friend forgives. Oh, by the way, listen to me. You're going to have a day when you think I'm after you. Just because I preach in this pulpit, you're going to say, oh, he came gunning for me. No, I didn't. Now, if the Holy Ghost, uh, Holy Ghost chases you up a tree, then so be it. But most of my preaching is general, and the Holy Ghost is the one that personally applies it. So if he knows that you got trouble, God bless you. Amen. Take it from God. Matthew chapter 26 and verse 50, the Bible says, And Jesus saith unto him, Friend, he says, Wherefore uh, art thou come? And then it says, uh, Came they and laid hands on Jesus and took him. Yet he called him friend. He knew why they came. And he said, Friend! Wherefore didst thou come? Why are you here? Friend! Hello? What do you do when your enemy shows up? Here's what you ought to do. You're not my enemy, but here's what you ought to do. You ought to walk up. Say, friend, how you doing? What if somebody shows up at the church that's hurt you and damaged you and personally has had a vendetta towards you? Here's what you ought to do. You see them. You walk up and say, hey, friend, sure is good to see you. Sure do love you. And mean it. And mean it. Let me give you one last thing, and I'm done. Here it is. And that is this. A friend forgives. I said a friend offers correction. A friend accepts. A friend uh, is steadfast. A friend loves. A friend sacrifices. But I'm going to give you this last, and that is this. A friend's open. They're open. You know, uh, uh, don't be offended when somebody comes up to you. And says, let, let me ask, you know, uh, uh, I, I want to help you. They're open to be able to receive correction and help. You know, the Bible says in John chapter 15, verse 15, the Bible says, it says, henceforth, he says, I call you not servants. He says, for the servant knoweth not what the Lord doeth. He says, but I've called you friends. It says, for all things that I have heard, and it says of my father, I've made known unto you. He said, I just want to talk to you as a friend. Now, can I tell you tonight, I think we need to work on friendships. Maybe tonight there is a, a mom, a dad, a brother, a sister, an aunt, an uncle, a cousin, a nephew, a niece. Maybe tonight there's a grandpa or grandma. Maybe tonight you need to write down somebody's name. Maybe you need to write down a name of somebody that's sitting in this church and with self-evaluation, you look at that and say, I could be a better friend. Maybe you need to write down the name of your wife, or maybe you need to write down the name of your husband tonight. Maybe you young people need to write down, uh, you know, the name of your dad, or maybe the name of your mom. Maybe tonight, here's what you need to do. Maybe you need to write down the name of the Lord. Say, so, you know, I've just not been a friend to the Lord like I should. He's the one that saved me, gave me eternal life, I'm going to heaven because of hell. And I'm just not the friend of Christ that I need to be. Maybe you just need to write down one word tonight, Jesus. Then in just a minute, I'm going to ask you to leave your seat. I'm going to ask you to bring that card. Somewhere around this auditorium, you get on your knees and you pray and say, Dear God, please help me to be that better friend to that person. Show me how I can help them. Show me how I can encourage them. Show me how I can take and be a better friend to that person. Let God, and then you take that card, you put it back in that Bible. You get up tomorrow morning and read your Bible. You pull that card out and say, God, you showed me this the other night. This is somebody you placed on my heart. 
And today, I'm going to try and do something, whether it's praying for them, sending them a text, whether it's encouraging them by a simple phone call. I'm going to try and do something today to strengthen that friendship. Then the next day, when you get up to read your Bible, you may pick somebody else out on that card. You may say, today it's their day. I'm going to do something extra special just to try and love them a little bit more. And you'll be amazed. It might be an enemy that you wrote down, somebody that has waged war against you. And you might write their name down. You say, today I'm going to try and do something, try and help them, encourage them, pray for them, whatever the case may be. But I'm really going to try to be that friend. Let's stand, please. Heads are bowed. Eyes are closed tonight.